anyway, Max and I, Father, bless our blessing. And, um, well, we had a practical lesson now. How about some spiritual lessons, Father, that uh, you would just nourish the souls of the, and the minds of men and women today. In Christ's name, amen. All right, the, the question that every Christian needs to ask, Lord, what will thou have me to do? We are going to preach this morning, not on this. Now, I have preached on this and have outlined it uh, a few ways. Uh, the challenge, the choice, the charge, the change. Uh, let's see, I have others in here. A desire, a direction, a distinction, a doing, a do yeah, no, 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 it goes. Uh, Anybody got an outline in your Bible? You do? It, it may be what I preach. Did, did I? What, what's your outline? For, for those first few? Oh, you do? Okay, that's the one I did. It, I remember we had a fella from, um, uh, he was from Northfield Baptist. I think you knew him. He was also from your church. It was a husband and wife. His wife had died. He ended up over, he was at your church, he was at Northfield Baptist, and he ended up over here at Avalon Church, and he came to visit here. Somebody invited him. I don't know who it was, but I preached on this, and he, and we went to visit, he said he could not get that out of his mind. He was also a song director. He lived, that's it, that is it. That is him. His wife had died, and he could not get that verse out of his head. I preached that verse here. What will I have me to do? He didn't know what to do. And he wanted to come here. And we went to visit him. I don't even remember who went with me. Maybe you went with me. We went to visit Mrs. Deferrington, and he said, I can't get that sermon out of my mind. Pardon? And he... He could not get that out of his mind. And Lord, what will thou have me to do? And he said it was such a long time since he's been challenged like that and so on. And uh, I, I, I think during that sermon I kept repeating the verse over. And Lord, what will thou have me to do? So this week something had come up. The wife and I were talking. We were driving. So who knows where we were. We were on the, the road. And I think we were in the car. And uh, something had come up. And it wasn't, Lord, what will I have me to do? Is like, like, folks, uh, uh, like, are they even saved? Or uh, will this go on? As far as this place right here, this building, you know, anybody that uh, tells me, and they do, I, I've got people that sit there. The church is not the building, and I, I'll, I, I just, the church is brick and stone. You know, like I'm a dumbbell. So. That's my comeback. These are people I'm very familiar with. Uh, no, the church is brick and mortar. Uh, that's what I say. I say the church is brick and mortar. Like I don't know that. And, uh, but will the church go on after her and I are gone? And we think about that. And, I, and it doesn't necessarily mean this place here. But what's going to happen to all the people after that? Does it just last as long as the leader is there? So we're going to preach on that. But the next step after that is, Lord, what will I have you to do? It's the most important question I believe that any Christian can ask themselves. Lord, what will thou have me to do? Is you need to find out what to do and go do it. I remember one time Pastor Thompson said, <clears throat> uh, he would get mad. I think it would be more in the evening. He would be mad. If he, if he were to pay, he would have flipped it, man. <laughs> he could boil a hard boil. Uh, an egg on his head, he'd be so mad. He, he would say, uh, if you don't have any convictions, because in a big church, you, we, you got this enormous church with uh, lots of people. Does everybody have the same convictions? All right. If you don't have any convictions, what, what would he say? 
If you don't have any convictions, what would he borrow say? Borrow some of mine. Well, he didn't say borrow, but, he's, but that's what. He said, use mine until you get some. You know, he would say that. If you don't know what to do, you, you need to find out what God would have you to do. And go do that and fulfill that. You need to do that. Now, uh, when I was lost, I... Uh, you know, I have all kinds of desires. Uh, I think uh, Dan was in a town. I don't know if I asked. No, Dan was not present. Uh, maybe I did it in the last uh, Eve Sunday night sermon. I said, was it Dan's desire as a little boy? I think that was Sunday night sermon. Yeah. Was it his desire? Because my desire was to be an engraver. I became an engraver. Dan's desire as a little boy was to fly, right? And he fulfilled that. So the things that you desired as a child, uh, why can't God use that? And if you fulfilled that as a child, became a young, a young person or teenager, young adult, and you became that, and you were very proficient in it, why can't God use that? Whatever that was, whatever that was that you were to be, why, why, God, why can't God? And turn that, I mean, uh, he was well trained. Did God use that? Right? Before, uh, after, but he was that trained before he was saved. Did God use that after he was saved? Right? So, what will thou have me to do? You need to find out what that is and do it. He, uh, he it completely abandons his own desires and ambitions. I, I said last. Uh, I've said it in the past. I had. I, I wish I had that can, can back. I had a can, and I would have thoughts during the evening. Uh, it, at night, I would actually have a pad by my bed. Anybody ever do that? Have a pad by your bed? You're sleeping with a pen? No? I'm only the only weird one here. No, I mean, we have a pen and pad by the phone. By the, but not by the phone. No, no, by your bed. By well, your well bed. we have a phone in the bed. But by your bedside, not a phone. The pad and the pen. What's the pad and the pen for? By your bed, no phone, no, no, forget the telly. You get a bright idea at 3 in the morning, and then, you, pardon? You get a thought. And I, would, I would jot my thoughts down in the dark, and I'd say, well, I'll read that later on. I'll be able to decipher what I wrote. I didn't turn the light on. I just jotted it down in, in my sleep, and... And, but I had this can full of, of bright ideas of inventions, and I knew a guy that uh, he was, he survived Auschwitz, he, he has the SS tattoo on his, uh, right here, survived, survived Auschwitz, he uh, was in, I think it's Hungary, I don't think it's, it's, it's Hungary, they took all the puppets of the uh, Communist Party, because the Communists took over there. Then when Russia comes in, what, what happens to all those puppets? He, he told me all about it. Anybody know what happened to the puppets? All the other communists. They did not kill them, but it's just the same thing as killing them. Where'd they go? Siberia. They went away to camp. They went away to camp. And all they camp. So they sent them away to camp. But he, he was in charge of an injection molding company. And he had all these ideas. He said, I am going to America. I'm going to get out of here. And I'm going to take all my inventions that are in my head that I will not tell anybody. When I get to America, I'm going to pr produce these things, all my ideas, and I'm going to become a very rich man. When he got to America, what happened to all his ideas? They were already there. Yeah. They're already invented. You see the difference between a suppressed society and a free society. And that's what uh, uh, liberals want to do, is make it not a free society. They want to make it back to the dark ages, where everybody's got to think like them. And it represses uh, uh, what we call the Great Reformation. Reformation, oh no, what, what's that era called? Not, not spiritually, the Reformation. The Industrial Revolution. Yeah. No, not the Industrial Revolution, the Renaissance. Anybody here remember in history the Renaissance? We get out of the dark ages and it's the Renaissance. Now people are starting to think of it and they're getting away. And, and who was in charge? 
who developed and created the Dark Ages other than the devil? Catholic Church. The Catholic Church? Yeah. Jesuits. It's, the Jesuits. It's either you, it's our way or the highway. So, but he abandons all his own desires and ambitions. When I got saved, I took that can of ideas and I, I, uh, I put them on the fire. I threw them out. But I, I kind of wonder what they were, you know. <laughs> he says, arise and go. Arise because every Christian needs to grow. 1 Peter 2.2 2 is the desire of the sincere milk of the word. 2 Peter 3.18, but grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So every Christian needs to grow. And he's told to go. All right, go. As it says there in verse 6, he is to rise and go. So for the lost, uh, the Lord says, come, come, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. Matthew 11, 28. And then for the saved, though, after they've come to the Lord, they are to go. We need to do that. We need to do that, to go forward for him. Uh, our next point here, conversion, how it affects a new believers and others about them. Uh, remember the healing of the blind man. What did they say about the blind man? When people of his acquaintances, of the society around him, and his parents. What did they say about that blind man? Uh, that's John chapter 9. What was the parents sent? No, what, no, what did those that were around him, what did they say about the blind man? That was healed and he could see. What they said... Once I say it, you'll, you'll remember. They, they said, uh, others, it said, others said, no, it is him. And others said, oh, he is like him. He is like him. In other words, you and I still appear to be the same person, but not quite. In other words, something's happened here. And others say, well, no, it's the same person as it was. It, it is him. All right, some may say, no, it isn't him. Obviously, he was healed. So you could have these different opinions about the same person, but there is a before and an after. Uh, we're so close, why not? John, it's John chapter 9. If you got a world edition, it's the left page, left column, halfway down. Verse 8, the neighbors, <clears throat> verse 8, the neighbors therefore, and they which before had seen him that was blind, said, It is not, is not this that he that sat and begged, and some said, this is he. Others said, he is like him, but he said, I am he. So there is a change. Others said, no, it's like him, but it's not the same person. Even though it is the same person, we're the same person, and we affect those. When a person is converted, and there's a conversion, it affects the person itself, themselves, and others that are about them. It brings in some people's heads confusion. Verse 7 of uh, Acts 9. Acts 9. And the men which sojourned with him stood speechless, hearing a voice but seeing no man. So it brings Oh, I do use those John 9. I do go back to John uh, chapter 9. We already read that. Uh, blindness. For uh, Paul, it brings about blindness. Uh, a newborn baby. Uh, you know, they, these uh, doctors want to say, I don't know how, how much is based on fact or, or we just assume, when a baby is born, can they see really good? No, right? And uh, I think with the, the story of uh, Helen Keller, don't, do they use a candle for that? How do they know that she's blind? in the movie. We're talking the Patty Duke movie. Do they use a candle and she doesn't follow the candle? Yeah. Well, the candle she was born. A lamp. They use a lamp. And, the, and, and she doesn't follow the lamp. So a baby can follow motions. We, we tend to do that. We, because our generation, we've seen, we, we, we've seen Patty Duke in the movie. So we may say, well, let's test this. And so you, you move your hand to see if the, ba if the baby follows it. And it's usually not a week old. It's usually a month old, right? 
Don't we start doing that when they're two or three or four weeks old? I can't even remember. You know, we did it seven times over. I ought to remember. Ask Zach. Yeah, ask Zach. Does he follow you? Not very well. But does he follow you at all? Yes. He does follow you. So he does, how old is he? He's three months. Three months. But he does follow you. But not perfectly. So the idea is his vision is limited. And so as a newborn babe in Christ, their vision is limited. All right, so the newborn baby's vision is limited. They are helpless, verses 8 and 9. Paul rose from the earth. When his eyes were opened, he saw no man, but they led him by the hand, brought him into Damascus. He was three days without sight, and neither did eat nor drink. All right, so... Uh, the newborn baby in Christ needs a lot of help. And those that are new in Christ, we, we want to do this when, when a person gets saved. And what is that? We go through a class and we call that what? Discipleship. Discipleship. We disciple them. I believe anybody can be discipled at any age in Christ. If it's later in their Christian walk, and it's good for refreshers. The learning techniques and, and so on. And those things are always good. And for someone to go through, uh, be able to disciple, you know, I had people, well, I want to do the discipling. I said, well, at least go through the discipleship with me. And then you go do the discipling. You know, I don't think that's a lot to ask to, for the person to go through the discipling with me first before they go and do the disciple. Do you think that's a lot? Am I asking too much? That they should go through the classes first. All right, uh, the church in Damascus. There, so it was in existence, probably because of the persecution that had happened earlier. Uh, verse two, he desired him letters to Damascus. So it did exist. Uh, verse 10, and there was a certain disciple at Damascus. Verse 19, when he had received meat, he was strengthened. Then was Saul certain days with the disciples which were at Damascus. <clears throat> so it's born out of uh, normal travel and so on. It's, it's, it, uh, it does exist. Uh... And we say, and not because of the per persecution of chapter 8, because Ananias only heard of that persecution of the saints in verse 13. You could argue the fact that we don't know how the church came into existence. We're just assuming how it came in. The point is this, it was in existence. <coughs> verse 6. <coughs> we are going through the King James Bible issue, and we have said that uh, during this uh, study on Wednesday night, that's Wednesday night, we only have one more session with the King James issue, and that is uh, we tend not to uh, confront this issue because the farther we go, we know less and less people that use other versions because we either it's separated fellowship, they've gone their, their own ways, uh, and, and so on. And, and we try to deal with it. And, and you need to have some silver bullets in your, in your not holster, what do you call that? Gun. In the, in the gun. But what do you call this thing that just shovels? Gun belt. The, the gun, gun belt. belt. Oh, okay. You need to have some silver bullets, and this is one of them. In verse 6, half of the verse is removed. And he trembling and astonished said, Lord, what will thou have me to do? In the new Bibles, that is removed. All right? It just goes directly. And the Lord said unto him, Arise and go into the city, shall be told thee what thou must do. They remove his confession of self, his profession of of salvation that, that has been removed. Remember, he's Jewish. The Jews believe in that, uh, that blood sacrifice. He's just got to acknowledge and confirm the fact that Jesus is that blood sacrifice. When he addresses the Lord Jesus as Lord, knowing that he is the Lord Jesus, 
is his confession or profession of salvation. It's removed out of the new Bibles. Uh, others of uh, which tamper with salvation. We brought both of these up last week. Acts 8.37 does not appear in the new Bibles. Verse 37 and, and the, and the, the, the uh, verse count goes from verse 36 to verse 38. From verse 36 to verse 38. So verse 37 is totally removed. Now, uh, just out of curiosity, uh, we, we had brought up, I, I brought up uh, Corey's uh, Espanol. Now, we had, we had a, I, I don't know if it was in this church, I don't think it was in this church, this is years ago, that there was a, uh, uh, an evangelist, some preacher said, listen, the King James Bible, it's in English, and that's what God uses to win the world, is English. And, but I had said Wednesday night, and those that are using Spanish need to learn English. That's what he said. If the shoe were on the other foot, if the shoe were on the other foot, let's say the King James Bible was Spanish and not English. If the shoe were on the other foot, folks, I don't have a paddle in that canoe. I think I could study that from now to doomsday, and I, I think I'm gonna be I, I'm gonna be just out of luck. I'm going to have to rely on whatever that guy is telling me because I don't think I'd be able to learn it. I, I really think there's some, some things that I make up my mind I'm going to do, but man, that is not one of them. In, you have a dual, you have the King James Bible and you have Spanish next to it. Now, in that Bible, I, I wanted to ask, why don't we do it right now? In the Spanish translation, does it, if you read the, the English, 837 in English, in Acts 837, does it appear in the Spanish or do they skip it? Now just say see sí or no. You don't have to read it. You have both. Okay, so in the Spanish, Acts 837 reads in Spanish like it reads in the English. It does. All right. Because in the New Bibles, I'm just saying that there, you know, there are those that uh, give uh, their what, approval or their uh, certificate uh, that this Spanish Bible, there are Spanish Bibles that are not the right Bible, but there's a Spanish translation that is the right Bible. Authenticity. Authenticity. That's the word. I mean. Yeah. Their, their approval on that. Okay, so that does have that 837 in it. Well, what would be the point in dropping it completely? They say that the better, the older, better translations do not have it. But if you notice, they they deal uh, the devil diminishes many. Uh, go to Luke 23:42. They diminish people's conversion or confession of salvation. The devil attempts to remove that. Yes, sir. This argument they say about older and better, it's a deception, it's a lie anyway. That's right, we brought that up. The, that older and better, the oldest scrap of Greek New Testament. As, there's a picture of it, I think it's in one of Gail's books, the oldest scrap, and it's dated in the like 50 something AD, it's in Matthew, it supports the King James. And they can say the Dead Sea Scrolls do not, but the Dead Sea Scrolls do. All right, it's kind of like, what kind of news do they call it out there today? <laughs> Fake. Fake news. Folks, these people can make up all kinds of stuff. And if they're the ones with the degrees, who are you, like, like you know? It, it, it was in the custody of Rome anyways. You gonna trust them guys? <laughs> and, and you're not gonna trust them, that's right. Luke 23, verse 42. The thief on the cross. And he said unto Jesus, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. In the New Bibles, the word Lord is dropped. So the idea is they want to lessen, lessen their profession of salvation. We assume the thief on the cross is Jewish. Again, 
just because he's dying on the cross. And we're not saying he wasn't guilty or well deserving of being crucified. We're not saying that. But the point is this, he still probably believes in that blood sacrifice. He just has to acknowledge that Jesus is that blood sacrifice. So the word Lord and acknowledging him as Lord is very important. All right, to call to do is in the heart of every sinner. Uh, these are examples of those that say uh, they want to do something. They're challenged, you know, we, we, we want to do something. In Acts 2.37, uh, they said, uh, Men and brethren, what shall we do? They wanted to get saved. After Peter, after Peter preaches on the day of Pentecost, he preaches, and the very first thing they do or say they want to do something. In other words, they want to do something in order to be saved. Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their hearts. All right, a good thing. And said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? So there's always this, this, this thing in the heart of the natural man that wants to earn salvation somehow by doing something. And so it's, it's it presented that. What, what's the first thing um, that Paul says? What will thou have me to do? All right, so this, this do, this do is always in the heart of man. Acts 16.30. At the Philippian jailer, he says the same thing. Acts 16.30. And brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? He wants to do something in order to be saved. John 6, verse 28. Now, we're going to be in John 6 today. John 6, verse 28. Uh, they say the same thing. The Pharisees say, say, you know, what good thing must I do? What, what, how do I inherit this, this everlasting life? What must I do? And, and then, so, uh, our Lord says to these Pharisees, you want to do something? All right, I'll tell you what to do. <laughs> All right, in verse 28, then, then said they unto him, What shall we do that we might work the works of God? See, they want to work their way to heaven. And so Jesus answered and said unto them, This is the work of God. You want to work your way there? You can do that. This is the work you must do, that ye believe on him whom he hath sent. Amen. That's what you got to do. Believe. That's it. Believe. He's telling them there's nothing to do, right? Just believe, believe, all right? The ministry of Ananias. And uh, folks, in other words, Lord, what, what, what must I, let's see, he says, what will thou have me to do? Well, Ananias had something to do, right? He's in town. Uh, uh, Paul is there. He needs, he needs to get his eyesight back. Ananias is an older saint and uh, and so I guess we've got a little outline here. The ministry of Ananias in verses 10 through 19. The readiness of Ananias. The idea is here, we need to be available. We need to always be available. I, uh, I was working I was working and I had gotten a call <laughs> Uh, I had gotten a call. This is uh, this is 20 years ago. I had gotten a call that uh, from Mark Wynn's wife. Now, now, this doesn't mean you're able to do this. I had we had started the church. We were in the house. So this may be 22 years ago, 21 years ago. We were in the house. I had gotten a call from Mrs. Gwynn saying that, and I don't even remember why Mark was in the hospital. He was in emergency. In the hospital, I forget what happened. Collapsed lung. Oh, he had a collapsed lung. Oh, you remember that? He had a collapsed lung. And what I say? What I tell him? I'm on the way. See, I could do that. If you do that, what happens? Your time card's pulled. <laughs> you, 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 can, you can do it, but usually it's only one shot deal. Your time card's pulled. And you have, what is the color of the slip you receive? It's pink. You get your pink slip, right? You're out of a job. 
Family emergency. Uh, yeah, you, you know what, they probably have. But this was not a family emergency. It's a family emergency. Yeah, I, I know what you're saying. But I had the, uh, I had the, not the opportunity, I had the uh, ability, the, uh, I had the uh, flexibility, that's a good, better word, the flexibility to do that. All right. And I could do that before I was saved. I could come and go. I could come and go. The readiness of Ananias, the instructions given to Ananias, he is given instructions. The Lord said unto him, Rise, go to the street which is called Straight, and inquire in the house of Judas for one called Saul of Tarsus, for behold, he prayed. He is, is given specific instruction. Uh, put the hands on that he might receive his sight in verse 12. Now, uh, he's at the street called Straight. I'm sure if we sit there and analyze these verses, we can come up... Uh, is there any coincidence that it's called Straight? Or is it just a matter of fact and that's just some information? I believe there's a reason for everything. Now, now we're, we're, I'm not saying I know what the reason why the word Straight is in there, but there is a reason. I don't think it's just random. That there, there is some spiritual significance to it. But he, he's ready to go. He's given instructions. And he has this uh, natural disbelief in verse 13 and 14 uh, that evil was done to the saints at Jerusalem. That would be like trying to win over or give the sight to... Uh, uh, who would that be like somebody getting saved? Give me an example today. Other than Charles Manson. Pardon? Oh, the Pope. That would be a good one. The Pope. Getting saved. This guy that ate the people, what was his name? Dahmer. Dahmer. Yeah, did he? I thought I saw a special on TV that supposedly he got saved. Yeah. Is that that's true? Well, Ted Bundy. Yeah, I don't remember him. That's son of Sam got saved. Oh, that's Son of Sam. No, but Son of Sam got saved. Son of Sam. He's, he a, he's, a, he's a, a Bible preacher in a jail, he's at. Son of Sam's still alive. I think so. David, uh, what's you his name? You want to know the weird thing? There was a house here, right there. And there was a dog pen here, right about where the piano is here. There was a dog pen there. On the edge of the cliff, and it was, it was, uh, pat, there was pallets in the back. I mean, they were stacked ten high to keep it from going over the cliff. And he had, he had a German Shepherd in there and a Dachshund. And Son of Sam was going on, and we were upstairs. And I mean, we have we have to entertain ourselves somewhere. So you know, so we're looking out the window, and that Son of Sam was on daily. It was like they're after this guy. We're going to get this Son of Sam guy. This is going back in the 70s? Mid 70s? Late 70s? There were so many of my God, Son of Sam. And I said, I said to the men, I said, wouldn't it be something? We were look, I was looking out at the dogs. I said, wouldn't it be something if it was the name of a dog? I said that. I said, and the name of the, uh, the two dogs was uh, Duchess and Buster. <laughs> I said, son of Duchess, or son of Buster, and lo and behold, it was named after a dog. Isn't that weird? It, it turns out to be that. The disbelief, all right, the explanation is, if the Lord gives an explanation, but the Lord said unto him, go thy way, for he's a chosen vessel. He gives an explanation in other words, I would assume we're entitled to an act. That does does the Lord have to give us an explanation? The Lord, who in the Bible did the Lord get not give an explanation to? Job. That that's the, that's the most prevalent one. He does not explain anything to Job. That's it. Tough Job. Tough. Doesn't but if the Lord's not obligated. But that doesn't mean the Lord won't explain things. So he gives an explanation to and I. And after the explanation, uh, he, he goes out and, and, and performs that. In verse 17 through 19, he goes, lays his hand on Paul, 
receive thy sight, and he says he's a chosen vessel, and so on. Listen, uh, th this explaining things, on and on and on, of explanation. Ours is not the reason why. How's the, how's the saying go? But to do, who, where's that come from? Ours is not the reason why. But to do and die. But to do or die. Do and die. It's a military. Oh, you mean it's certain that it is? The military. But I think it's do or die. Do or die. But ours is not the reason why, but to do or die. I mean, when they say charge, charge. <laughs> is that the charge? Yeah, that sounds like a, a half a leg, a half a leg, a half a leg on her. As they volleyed and thundered, right? All right, we are, we're over. We're going to stop right there. We'll pick it up in verses 15 and 16 next week and start right there. Father, bless now the preaching to follow. In Christ's name, amen. Amen. Preaching at 15.